Welcome to Phase On Labs, powered by the World One One Podcast Network and sponsored by Phase On Flakes, radioactively delicious part of your mutagenic breakfast. I am, as always, your host, Larry the Bearded One. Joining me this week is Michael Powerbomb Performance Problems Brown. <laughs> you promised you wouldn't say anything. <laughs> it happens to all of us. <laughs> I like that one. It's not bad for off the top of my head. <laughs> I think that might stick around. Uh, no. <laughs> I'll talk to my doctor about it. <laughs> Here's a prescription for Phazon. <laughs> Why does my penis glow blue, Doc? Side effect. <laughs> <laughs> We are the internet's premier Metroid Futures podcast where every week we bring you a new pitch for another Metroid game so that we hope we don't ever have to go another 19 years without, god damn it. <laughs> so, so this week, uh, I'm bringing you one of my half-cocked ideas because I've usually got them full-baked before I bring them to the show, but not always. And this is one of those uh, occurrences. So I was thinking about it this past week. And it occurs to me, you know, we, we've talked a lot about what we thought, you know, Dread might one day be. And now that Dread's out there in the world for us, you know, what we think will, uh, you know, might come next or could come next or should come next. But we haven't really been talking about Prime 4, which is, you know, confirmed and it's been in the cooker for two and a half, almost three years now. The second time around. Yeah, it's been a while. It was 2019, uh, like January or February, when they announced they were uh, restarting it. Hmm. So yeah, it's it's been a while. Next year will be the third anniversary of that announcement. So, but in any case, so it occurs to me we haven't really talked about Prime Four. What we think might, uh, you know, might happen, might be going on, and I'm, I'm starting. Oh, oh, go, go ahead. ahead. Really? Uh, go ahead. We'll uh, we'll talk about it later. Okay. So I was thinking about it, and I was thinking about the ending of Prime Three, and you know, there there's been speculation as to where Prime Four will sit in the timeline, if it will be, you know, a continuation of right where Prime Three left off, or if it'll be you know, stuck in the middle of two other games or post dread or what, but <clears throat> I'm working on the idea that Prime 4 will take place after Prime 3 before Samus returns. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, this is, forgive my ignorance here, but right. the Primes take place before Samus returns? Yes, they take place between 1 and 2. Shit, I didn't know that. Uh-huh. Oh, okay. Cool. So, canonically, it's early Metroid. But, so my thought is, is at the end of Prime 3, I know you haven't seen it, but I'm going to spoil a little piece for you. You get your 100% completion. You see the scene at the end where Silex's ship goes chasing off after Samus after she leaves. And... They've said that they want to do something with Silex, you know, if there was ever a Prime 4, which is coming. So I'm assuming we're getting something that involves Silex from Hunters. My thought is, is if I remember the backstory for Silex correctly, he has a beef with both Samus and the Federation. And my weird idea was that Silex comes from a race that has a natural ability of foretelling or prophecy okay. and that he knows and is trying to catch up with Samus to fucking warn her about all the bullshit going on in the black ops and wet work divisions of the federation and all the dirty shit that they're up to okay now 
you have to forgive me. I'm going to ask a lot of questions because I know nothing of this Silas character. Silex? Silex. Silex, okay. Yeah, I know nothing of this character. So were they antagonistic? Silex was one of the six hunters from Metroid Prime Hunters. So they were all competing. DS game, right? Yep. Okay. And all of these hunters were competing to try and get to this ultimate power thing first. That ended up being a trap. I thought hunters was just a side thing that didn't actually wasn't actually considered canon. No, it's canon, just like Prime is canon. I knew Prime was canon, but nope, hunters is officially in there. Okay. It took place. What about Federation Force? Was that canon? Yep weird as that is. I didn't even know there was a story in the Federation Force. Uh-huh. It's not necessarily a good one, but it's a story. So. But no, I, I kind of want to see this idea of Silex is chasing Sam is trying to catch up with her. She doesn't fucking know it. And I'm now, not how, sure how to... Like, like I said, were they antagonistic then, or... All the hunters were really, yeah. Okay. Like no, only one of them specifically. Well, two of them specifically had a beef with Samus. The others were just kind of there. Um, but Silex, if I remember the story correctly, does have an issue with Samus and the Federation. I, I think the uh, the whole prophecy bit knowing that there's a bunch of dirty fuckers in the Federation could explain his beef with the Federation. Yeah. Now, Samus isn't actually part of the Federation. She just works with them occasionally, right? Correct. She's contract. Well, he's basically contract. So. But uh, part of me, though, wants to see this play out where you're getting to play as both characters. One of Samus is she's progressing towards whatever the hell's going on that's got her attention that she's trying to stop. But then occasionally flipping back and actually playing as Silex trying to catch up with her. Kind of like her Breath, down. Of, Breath of Fire 4 did. I don't think I played Breath of Fire 4. Oh, you should have. It was so good. Uh, old style RPG, but the game starts out, you literally jump back and forth between two characters, one of which ends up being the final boss of the game. Ooh. And, like, he's hyper-powerful. Okay. Well, yeah, kind of like that. Yeah, it was well done. Honestly, uh, as terrible as it sounds, because it's not really my cup of tea, but um, part of me had, you know, had the concept of uh, switching between, like, Master Chief and the Arbiter running, you know, parallel but different stories. Okay. As I said, I've never played the Halo games either. That's alright. So, the story's not bad by any means. Some of them are a little better story than others. Five was trash. But, how many? I'm sure... There's five? Uh, numbered, there's five. Unnumbered, there's more. Yikes. I did not know that. <laughs> yep, it's a thing. So, uh, of course, I gotta keep pumping them out for as long as they can. Oh, obviously. But well, granted, it's not like they rush them ever. So fair, and I've, I've heard they're usually relatively good. I just not my cup Mostly. of tea. No, well, there's nothing wrong with that either. But, but yeah, no, I, I kind of want to see this like back and forth, and I, I kind of want to see like Silex's sections of the game involve some actual, like, tracking. Ooh, yeah, if they did that right, that could be good. Mm-hmm. Like, um, something akin almost to the, uh, the detective mode parts of Batman. A little bit. I could see that. I wouldn't mind having some of that with... You know, and that'd be a fun thing to bring in if we ever got around to it, you know, where, where we're playing a a game where Samus is just going around tracking down bounties, but I've got some... I think we might have even talked about that idea. I'll have to go back and double-check now, but... I think um, we did, actually. But, 
you know, actually like tracking her bounty with, uh, you know, specific visor modes for looking for shit and clues left behind and, you know, actual literal tracks, maybe even. I think that could be fun. That, that idea definitely entices me, especially in a first person mode. Tracking, God forbid yeah. we have having yeah, a track God. of shit based on an ion trail or something. Oh, God, yes. I really do wish, though, we could do something more with her ship in, uh, in Prime 4. Like, they started to go on the right track with 3 and then just teased it. Like, no, more! Because, man, playing around on the inside of the ship in Prime 3 was a great time. I didn't know you got to. Uh-huh. You literally start the game there. You get to, like, push all the buttons and turn the knobs and pull the levers and shit. It was great. So, they even hid secret messages in her ship. Really? Yeah. Like so, messages. okay. So, here's some fun, useless trivia for anybody that may not know. But it's old, so you might. So, at the very beginning, you get a, a call over the radio from the Federation ship that you're about to dock on and they tell you to input your your verification or your access code or whatever and this little panel drops down from the ceiling of the ship right in front of your face and it's got an array of buttons and it tells you which buttons you need to push but if you push some of the other buttons in specific sequences instead of playing the, the next bit of the game there's actually recorded audio messages from some of the people that worked on Corruption. Okay, that's kind of cool. Added bonus points? They're all in Japanese. Oh, yeah? Uh-huh. So you have to find them, and then you have to translate. <laughs> so. But, yeah. That's that's a thing that's in there. But I, I think that's what I want for Prime 4, though. I, I want to be able to bounce the story between Samus and Silex. I want to know what Silex's deal is officially, but I kind of like my idea for that's his deal. I see it being I, good. I want it. I think maybe occasionally you, uh, you run into a boss fight over the course of Prime 4 that stalls Samus up long enough that Silex actually, you know, manages to catch up just briefly and long enough to maybe, like, in a CPU fashion, take take part in the boss fight. Okay. And as it ends, maybe Samus starts getting wise to the fact she's being chased and, you know, manages to get away. But I also think it'd be a neat way, too, to uh, have a little fun with some of the boss fight design because you could structure and build different boss fights for each of the different characters, you know, for Samus and for Silence that play to their specific abilities for those boss fights. Okay. Like, Silex's uh, alt mode was actually, I think would be kind of neat to play with in a boss fight. Because he, yeah, like, he doesn't turn into a ball. He kind of turns into this floating little, like, hover spider thing. Ooh. And, uh, <coughs> his alt mode weapon is basically like a tripwire mine. Okay. So how Samus, you know, drops bombs. Imagine dropping bombs, but after you drop the first one, bomb number two creates an energy wire to bomb number one, and bomb number three creates an energy wire to bomb number two and bomb number one. So if somebody trips across, you know, just a single line, snaps and explodes on them or if you manage to surround them with all three the whole thing just like rubber bands shut on them and detonates okay that was Stylix's alt mode in Hunters or maybe not detonates but uh like bounds them up mm -hmm. yeah like a snare or a web yeah that could be fun that could be a great, like, alt mode, uh, you know, weapon upgrade for Silex. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Because then, you know, it'd be the first... It'd really be the first character outside of Samus, not including Federation Force, that they'd really get to expand on. Because, you know, all the hunters had basic stuff, you know, basic stuff, but you never really saw what, you know, what would happen if any of their powers, you know, upgraded or they got any more gear along the way. And Samus does that every game. I think it'd be kind of cool to see them explore that. Yeah, I think I've done right. Question is, though, are they bringing back Phazon or is Phazon dead dead? My money's on Phazon is dead and gone. I think Phazon is dead and gone because it never came up in any of the other games. And you said that was one of the earlier games chronologically. Right. But considering, too, though, that, you know, they wrote the, the Prime games well after all those, you know, as a side story, it could still be there for Prime 4 if it takes place inside that same gap. And then, you know, reclose it again with Prime 4 or 5 or 6 or whatever the fuck happens. But I would really like to see them take on something totally different instead of wrapping it around that. Yeah. My only question is, is that, you know, how do you still call it a Prime game if Metroid Prime isn't actually in it? And you can't have that without Phazon. The Metroid Prime was in all of them? Yes. Huh. Because the first Metroid Prime had Metroid Prime in the end fight which then in the 100% ending is where you saw the creation of Dark Samus and then Dark Samus was in 2 and 3 which Dark Samus carried genetic material from Metroid Prime so it was part Metroid okay it was part Metroid, part Samus part Phazon all cop <laughs> Oh God! There's there's the spinoff game we need. We need Dark Samus in law enforcement. <laughs> Full on RoboCop spoof. I was gonna Make say it a, Robo, yeah, RoboCop spinoff. Definitely, that's the Metroid movie we need. Somebody call up John Woo. We've got the script. <laughs> God, I remember getting all excited when I heard that he held he held the movie rights for a while. Of. Metroid? Metroid, yeah. Really? Yeah, it was for a couple of years and then did nothing with them and let it expire. Yeah. The, those movie rights have made the rounds a few times. Yeah, I know that. Like, to be fair, though, I'm glad they're not just pumping out shit, you know? Right. It's so one of the things I'm actually really proudest of right now, of, of, of right now is the fact that when people go to make something, they... You know, like, we're getting more good stuff as opposed to garbage. Yeah. You know? Because, mm-hmm. like, the automatic response when someone says, hey, I'm making a very, very, a 30-year-old sequel to this and that, and it, you know, you're automatically like, this is going to be shit. But they've some of them have been decent. So... Kind of makes you wonder what Dread would have been like if they had put it out when they had originally attempted it. Yeah. I wonder if that prototype still exists anywhere. AM2R. It... Probably something along those lines, honestly. Yeah. Given that they would have been building off the, the fusion engine at that time. Yeah. Maybe, you know, uh, a juiced up version of it on the DS, but yeah so but no I um I, I think that's a good place to wrap this up though I, yeah I don't, this obviously doesn't need any kind of name or anything no I've got a title for it oh do you? I do I'm listening I feel like if this all came together and went with that plot thread idea we would be playing Metroid Prime 4 foretold Okay. And now I'm going to be disappointed when it comes out if 
they don't do something with the Silas thing. Yeah. I'm going to be surprised if Silas isn't in Prime 4, given what uh, Tanabe has said on the subject. So. <laughs> Because he's like, yeah, no, I've got ideas for what I want to do with Silex in another Prime game if ever given the opportunity. So obviously there was something in mind. It's just a question of did that carry into the the final idea. But given how long it's been stewing, I'd be really surprised if it wasn't there. But maybe that's just me. Yeah. So, but yeah, I think that's it. So I want to say thank you to everybody that came and hung out with us this week here at uh, here in the lab. Uh, thank you to my uh, lab partner, Michael. And uh, we'll see you all next week here on Phase on Labs, powered by the World 1-1 podcast. We'll see you all next mission. Peace! <laughs>